Typical. You wait your whole life for the ultimate game monitor. 32 inches, 4K, OLED, 240Hz, and then all of a sudden, loads come out at once. They're like buses. But this may just be the best of the lot. It's the ASUS ROG Swift PG32 UCDM, and it's pretty incredible, actually. So I'm feeling a little bit of Groundhog Day right now, if Groundhog Day was about, you know, reviewing high-end gaming monitors, because I've just finished my video on LG's 32-inch 4K 240Hz OLED. And now I have this ROG, which has similar specs and a similar price, but I think there are enough differences and extra features to make them feel really different to use. And there's also a couple of slightly more affordable alternatives, again with similar specs, including a curvy Alienware with a QD OLED screen and this MSI. Now, to be fair, paying a grand or more for a gaming monitor is an awful lot of money. The good news is that because there is so much competition, hopefully we'll see some competitive pricing and deals over the next few months. And I also reckon we'll probably see updated 27-inch models uh, sometime this summer. So if this is too big and too expensive, maybe hold out. But for me, as someone who definitely prefers a bigger 32-inch, I think this might be my new everyday monitor. So what makes this ROG so special? Well, it's using ASUS's third gen QD OLED panel. And the big news is the jump to 4K at 240Hz, the 32 inch size, and a new sub-pixel layer for much better definition around fine detail like text. Rough looking detail was a big weak point of older OLEDs, which suffered with color fringing and blurriness, which made them kind of lousy for work tasks, like if you had a Google Doc op, but not anymore. We get a super quick 0.03 milliseconds greater grade response time, HDR10, Dolby Vision, although coming via an update, display HDR400 True Black, and of course, like any high-end gaming monitor worth its salt, we've got FreeSync Premium Pro, we've got Adaptive Sync and G-Sync compatibility. There's also a uniform brightness mode, we have an extra low motion blur, or ELMB tech, KVM switch, and a USB Type-C port with up to 90 watts power delivery. But wait, there's more. Because this also uses a graphene layer as part of their uh, custom heatsink, which they've built into this. It's not active fans, it's just passive cooling. But with that graphene, it helps disperse the heat away from the screen, meaning we can get higher brightnesses and crucially higher sustained peak brightnesses. And ROG very kindly offer a three year warranty, which includes cover against burn-in. Of course, I load the same game in Cyberpunk where that's happening. Mm. What I was gonna say is that this has been the best gaming experience I think I've ever had on a gaming monitor, in terms of the visuals at least. Less so the audio because, well, it doesn't have any speakers built in and I really did appreciate having the speakers on the LG I just tested. Uh, obviously it's not the end of the world, you're probably gonna have a pair of headphones anyway, but you know, decent built-in speakers for this kind of money, I wouldn't say no to it. Still, playing at 4K, and if you can get to it, the full 240Hz refresh rate on this semi-gloss QD OLED just looks and feels amazing. The thing is though, very few people actually game at 4K. If you look at the Steam survey index, it's like 1% or something, it's single digits. Not many people, because it's so demanding, you have to have a really high-end system to actually take advantage of it. But if you can, what I definitely do say if you've used 4K screens yourself, is that 32 inches I think is the best size to really appreciate it. If you're 27, stick to Core HD, get higher frame rates. And if you have a console, it looks just as good. Although most games are still sort of 60 FPS though, there's only a handful that are 120. But 4K at 32 inches, and also with the QD OLED panel, which gives us these lovely deep contrasty blacks and super vibrant colors, an HDR looks amazing in a way that you just can't get on an IPS or VA. However, there is a downside to this lovely contrasty, vibrant, glossy screen, and that is reflections. It does a decent job at sort of diffusing it a little bit, but it's nowhere near the level of anti-reflectivity you get on, say, that matte LG panel. So this is definitely best used in darker conditions and do not place it, you know, opposite a window, not that you probably would anyway, but just bear in mind that being reflective or semi-gloss, I should say, it is going to pick up more mirrors and lights and windows, but it's certainly not as bad as some pure glossy screens I've seen, which basically act like a mirror. And what I would also say compared to the LG is that the brighter whites have a much cleaner look. LG's matte anti-glare screen has slightly dirty looking whites and also flatter, slightly less vivid colors. Colors are nice and accurate. I measured 100% sRGB, 97% P3, and a slightly less impressive 91% Adobe RGB. And I do like the fact we have separate sRGB and P3 modes depending on what you need. And it's been great for me editing my photos and videos. And it gets bright, especially for an OLED. I measured between 1000 and 1100 nits peak brightness on a 10% window, and it managed to maintain this where the LG quickly dimmed. 
And in HDR movies and games, the ROG was consistently 80 to 200 nits brighter than the LG, which is probably due to that custom heatsink and the fact that QD OLEDs are usually a little bit brighter than the W OLED type panel we get on the LG. And in SDR, or on a 100% white screen, both sustained between 550 and 600 nits, which is still very impressive, but a decent mini LED will get a lot brighter. Design-wise, well, it's ROG business as usual, with its trademark blade-like stand with projected logo, and this RGB glyph which you can control via Aura on the OSD. I do like the slim frame around the edges as it kind of hides the depth, although the bezels are a little bit chunkier than the LG. And while it's a bit plasticky in places, the stand feels robust and the metal legs feel great. And I really appreciate that the rear part of the stand doesn't stick out too far either, so you can still push this reasonably close to the back of your desk. And you do also get this screw thread on top for attaching extras like streaming webcams or this ROG Aura light bar. They also make a desk mounted ROG monitor arm to give you a bit more flexibility. And while it is a standard visa attachment, unlike generic arms, this design fits with the rest of the monitor's aesthetic. There's also a good amount of adjustability, flexibility. You can rotate and pivot and tilt. Actually, you can't rotate. That's one thing it can't do. Well, like three or four, maybe five degrees. That's the most you can do. You can't turn it vertically and have it in portrait mode. And actually, it's a little bit annoying that you can even do that because then it's really difficult to actually find the straight level again. It also doesn't really get high enough, at least for my use case, because sometimes I plug in my MacBook Pro, my 16 inch, and you can see I've got my little bit of script here. And that's the result. I know the 16 inch is a big laptop, but I kind of have to move it all the way forward, tilt the screen. Not ideal at all. So yeah, a little bit more height would have been nice. Also, bit of a nitpick, but because this IO shield is so low down, the power cable has no option but to droop down behind the monitor, meaning you can pretty much always see it, even if you route it through the cutout in the stand. Anyway, round the back, we have the usual little joystick for controlling the on-screen display. We've got tons of picture options and game plus extras like an FPS counter, crosshair, sniper, sniper night vision. This is fun. You can basically make your entire screen night vision at all times. Shadow boost, and you can tink with all the image and color settings as well. Lots of options there, which is great. And we get loads of connectivity, two HDMI 2.1s, a single DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC for connecting desktop PCs at the full 4K 240, as well as three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A's, headphone jack, and an audio optical out. The big deal for me though is not only do I use my desktop PC, but I do regularly plug in my MacBook, which while I could also use the HDMI 2.1 port, it doesn't charge it. So I prefer using the Type-C and this has a Type-C with DisplayPort support, meaning I can connect and charge my laptop with one cable. Now the caveat is you can set it to charge at 90 watts if you want, although this does limit the panel brightness to 60%. So I prefer to have the 65 watt charging with the maximum brightness. So given how good this is for gaming, you'd imagine it's also pretty good for getting some work done, for productivity as well. And you'd be right. Editing photos and videos at 240Hz with this quality of OLED screen is fantastic. And at 32 inches, there's plenty of screen space for having multiple apps side by side, and the improved panel clarity versus previous gen OLEDs makes it so much nicer to use. Plus there's a picture-in-picture -picture mode along with a built-in KVM switch so you can plug in one set of peripherals like a mouse and keyboard and then share them between devices. Now, of course, being OLED, you're never that far from the conversation around burn-in. Now, I've never experienced this myself, but I've also not used a single monitor for many years, and I've also tried not to abuse them necessarily, because all these OLED monitors have pixel refresh and shift and screensavers and uh, auto-dimming. Like, there's lots of safety features to mitigate the chance of burn-in, but it's not impossible. But the good news, and what I really appreciate about ASUS ROG, is that the three-year warranty does also support burn-in. But that is more reassuring than some rival brands. So to wrap up, between this and the LG, now I've reviewed both of them, both exceptional monitors and also very expensive. Personally, I would probably go with the ROG here for the USB Type-C port with DisplayPort, and I also prefer the glossy screen. I do like the fact that the LG has speakers and also it does have that 480Hz gaming option at 1080p, although that's not something I would use that often and the quality isn't fantastic. But all else being equal, I would probably go with the ROG. I just like the screen a bit more. Although I would be tempted to go with the cheaper MSI or Alienware, but I haven't tested those yet. So as ROG say on their own website, this monitor is the chosen one. And I guess you can see why. It's 
pretty much perfect. There's a couple of design niggles. It would have been nice if we could have it portrait mode and also there's no speakers. It is also very expensive and fundamentally it is quite hard to actually get that 240 Hz at 4K in the most recent AAA games. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to go for one of these or one of the rivals or none of the above? Too expensive. Let me know what you make of this in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, a little like and subscribe would be fantastic and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.